Today we are going to talk about troubleshooting the electrical starting system on Caterpillar engines. If you are working on equipment experiencing poor engine cranking performance, this video will help you identify if a component in the electrical starting system is at fault. The following components will be tested. Battery, cables, connectors, relay, isolation switch, and the starter. The goal of this procedure is to minimize repair time and repair expense, including the unintended replacement of good components. To complete the troubleshooting steps, you will need a multimeter, a simplified starting circuit is displayed here. The terminals for testing are highlighted as shown. These will be used throughout this video. The terminal in red is the battery plus terminal and the terminal in black is the ground terminal. The battery plus wire to the IMS is also labeled here. Most starters will have these terminals labeled. We will use a CAT gen set to illustrate the troubleshooting steps. These same basic steps can be applied to your engine. You will take multiple measurements, then follow this procedure, which can be recorded in this chart. Step one, measure the voltage at the battery post. If the battery voltage is greater than or equal to 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, then proceed to step two. If the battery voltage is less than 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, then charge the battery, retest, and proceed to step two. If battery voltage is less than 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, load test the battery, replace as needed, and proceed to step two. Step two, visually inspect battery cable connections at the batteries. If the connections are clean and tight, then proceed to step three. If the connections are loose, dirty, or corroded, complete a repair, then proceed to step three. Before moving to the next step, let's look at a starter with and without an integrated magnetic switch and identify the appropriate terminals for subsequent tests. Some starters include a protective cover over the solenoid and integrated magnetic relay, IMS relay. This cover may be difficult to remove without damaging the starter. If unable to remove the cover without damaging the starter to perform some steps in this guide, perform all other steps that are possible. If still unable to verify the functionality of the starter, then the starter is assumed to be at fault and can be replaced. Step three, measure battery voltage at the starter terminals. If voltage is within 1.0 or 0.5 volts of step one, then proceed to step six. If voltage is greater than 1.0 or 0.5 volts below step one, then inspect, clean, and repair the cable between the battery and starter, then proceed to step four. Step four, measure battery voltage at the starter terminals. If voltage is within 1.0 or 0.5 volts of step one, then proceed to step six. If voltage is greater than 1.0 or 0.5 volts below step one, then inspect the protection devices, then proceed to step five. Step five, measure battery voltage at the starter terminals. If voltage is within 1.0 or 0.5 volts of step one, then proceed to step six. If voltage is greater than 1.0 or 0.5 volts below step one, then measure cable resistance for hidden internal corrosion, repair, then proceed to step six. Step six, attempt to crank the engine. If the engine cranks normally, then after multiple successful starts, return the equipment to service. If the engine cranks, but is slow, then proceed to step seven. If the engine does not crank, then proceed to step nine.
failure to let the starter cool down can damage the starter and void your warranty. If you are attempting to start the engine at cold ambient temperature conditions and at higher elevations, please ensure the starting aids are used and functioning properly. During starter engagement, it is possible that the starter gear will not engage the flywheel gear. If this occurs once, this is acceptable and the engine start sequence should be repeated. If this occurs more than once, there may be a problem with the starter, starting system, or flywheel gear. Step seven, measure starter voltage while cranking. If voltage is greater than or equal to 16.0 or 8.0 volts, then proceed to step eight. If the voltage is less than 16.0 or 8.0 volts, then charge the battery, retest, and proceed to step eight if passes. If the voltage is less than 16.0 or 8.0 volts, then load test the battery, replace as needed, proceed to step eight. If the batteries are suspected of being bad, take the batteries to your dealer for load testing. Load testing is the only way to verify the battery is functioning correctly. Battery voltage alone does not detect a bad battery. Please note, lead acid batteries lose a significant amount of performance at cold temperatures. Any deep discharge condition of the batteries will reduce battery performance and battery life, even after recharging. Load testing will verify if the battery is functioning correctly. Step eight, measure starter voltage while cranking. If the voltage is zero volts, then proceed to step nine. If voltage is within 1.0 or 0.5 volts of step seven, then the solenoid is good, the motor is bad, repair the motor or replace the entire starter, then proceed to step nine. If voltage is greater than 1.0 or 0.5 volts below step six, then the solenoid is bad. Replace the solenoid or replace the entire starter, then proceed to step nine. Step nine, measure solenoid voltage at the starter while cranking. If the voltage is zero volts, then the relay circuit has malfunctioned. Proceed to step 10. If the voltage is greater than 2.0 or 1.0 volts below step seven, then identify high resistance source, wire or relay and repair. Then proceed to step 10. If the voltage is within 2.0 or 1.0 volts of step seven, then inspect the starter pinion and gear and repair as needed. If no gear damage is present, replace the starter, then proceed to step 10. Step 10, measure voltage on the starter solenoid side of the integrated mag switch, IMS, or starter motor mag switch, SMMS, relay while cranking. If the voltage is zero volts, then diagnose the IMS or SMMS and then proceed to step 11. If the voltage is greater than 2.0 or 1.0 volts below step seven, then diagnose the SMMS control circuit and repair, then proceed to step 12. Step 11, measure voltage on the battery plus side of the IMS or SMMS relay. If the voltage is zero volts, then diagnose the battery plus power source to the IMS or SMMS. Refer to the electrical schematic to repair, then proceed to step 12. If the voltage is present, then the IMS or SMMS relay has malfunctioned. Proceed to step 13. Step 12, measure voltage on the battery plus side of the IMS or SMMS while cranking. If the voltage is greater than 2.0 or 1.0 volts below step seven, then high resistance is in the battery plus power source to the IMS or SMMS. Repair or replace the wires, then proceed to step 13. 
if voltage is within 2.0 or 1.0 volts of step 7, then the IMS or SMMS is bad. Replace the IMS or SMMS, then proceed to step 13. Step 13. Measure the IMS or SMMS control signal voltage on the coil of the IMS or SMMS relay while attempting to crank. If the voltage is zero volts, then check the IMS or SMMS relay. Refer to the electrical schematic to repair. If the voltage is within 1.0 or 0.5 volts of step one, then the IMS or SMMS is bad. Replace the IMS or SMMS, then return to service. At this point, you will have successfully diagnosed your starting system problem and return the equipment back to service. Thank you for watching, and as always, your Caterpillar dealer is available to help with all your product service needs.